Thank you all for being here. We're going to talk about smoke dampers today. There's a couple types of dampers that we have on job sites. There are fire dampers and there are smoke dampers. Fire dampers are for controlling the spread of fire in the building, where smoke, to tamper, smoke dampers control the spread of smoke in the building. Uh, the fire dampers are activated by a thermal detector that's built into the unit. They're not connected to the fire alarm. They're not activated by the fire alarm. We don't do anything with those at all. I wanted to mention them because they say fire dampers. It's really common for people to think, oh, it says fire. It needs to tie into the fire alarm system. Smoke dampers, on the other hand, are what we do tie into, and those spread this, uh, they control the spread of smoke in the building. And this picture over on the right hand side of the screen, that's a picture of a smoke damper. On the, the right hand side, there's a box with an orange label on it. That's actually the motor that, that operates the unit. And then you have the, uh, the louvers that you see going side to side on the unit that are open in this picture. And then that motor will rotate and cause them all to close which either allows smoke to go a direction or doesn't allow. We're trying to control the spread of smoke in the building. Smoke inhalation is actually the leading cause of death in a burning building. Um, it's not by actually touching the fire. It's by breathing the smoke, people choke and die. Now, obviously, touching the fire and getting trapped into an area where fire is closing in around you and the fire reaches you, that can be bad as well. But uh, in, inhaling too much smoke can cause you to pass out and eventually suffocate long before that fire actually touches you. And because that's the cause of death, it makes it the inhalation of that smoke is the leading cause. So what dampers help us do is they help us direct and control where that smoke goes in the building in the event of a fire so that uh, we can use this control to keep our passive egress safe. Stairwells in a high rise, for instance, we've talked about a handful of times. We have stair pressurization fans, the other side of that is we have to have dampers because if we send air into somewhere, there has to be a way for that air to get out. Otherwise, it blows up like a balloon. So there's a diagram here in the picture. And on the left-hand column, you see there's an arrow pointing down that's saying smoke is coming into this building. You have three different smoke zones here. There's the top, middle, and bottom. And you see on the top and bottom, it's allowing air to come into those, but it's closed to the damper on the center one where we're showing that there's actually smoke in there. And so that would be like where your alarm is. And by closing that damper, we're forcing air into the areas that there is no smoke, creating a higher pressure there. And that pressure is going to keep the smoke pushed away from it. The smoke will get vacuumed toward the lower pressure that's caused by that closed damper over there. And then on the other side, it's the exact opposite. You have the two closed dampers on the clean area and the open damper for the exhaust. And by closing those dampers, you're helping build the, the pressure up because you're shoving air in one side and holding it on the other. And it's actually forcing the air to flow into the smoke zone. So now not only are we keeping the smoke from spreading into other areas of the building, we're actually forcing it to, to move through the exhaust and out on the right-hand side. Um, so this is the purpose of what smoke dampers do. Uh, how elaborate they get can vary from building to building. High rises, for instance, are going to be much more elaborate than a really small little nursing home. A larger nursing home is going to be more elaborate than that smaller one, all depending on the, the firewalls, the occupancy rating. But no matter where they are, this is their basic function is it's the control of, of smoke through the building. So now when we control them, we have to make sure that we can handle the power correctly because we're not providing the power circuits to them. The electricians provide the power circuits. The mechanical contractor actually installs the damper itself. All we do is interface it with the fire alarm so that they know where the fire is, when the fire is happening. And so one of the, the biggest questions we get about this is when can we just use an addressable relay? When do we need an MR101 style relay? So I, I went and found some kind of typical ratings for normal smoke dampers. And that is each individual damper typically draws somewhere between 0.15 amps, which is 150 milliamps, and 0.25 amps, which is 250 milliamps. And that's each. So if you have three of them wired up in series on a circuit and they're drawing that quarter of an amp each, you now have three quarters of an amp on that circuit. And that's going to be essential in determining which relay we need to use so they're powered by 120 volts and our relays are rated at different rates at that 120 volts. Our addressable relay is rated to handle up to half an amp at 120 volt. So at most that's gonna be two, maybe three dampers. And you know, that's three if it's on the smaller end of that rating, two is pushing it if, I, if you're on the higher end of that rating. And then we have the MR101 type relay, which is pictured on the screen. And that one is rated at 10 amps at 120 volts. So 20 times the load. 
So if we can hold one or two smoke dampers on the addressable relay, we can hold 20 or 40 smoke dampers on this MR101. So it, it's very quick that we have to switch over to the MR101, but it's not very quick after that, that we have to start adding additional ones. Typically the one MR101 is big enough to handle whatever the application is because it is 20 times as strong. Here's the same picture I used last week. It still applies because we still wire common and normally closed if we're using just an addressable relay to control these dampers. So the way the dampers are, we normally have them energized. We're normally allowing power to pass through them that holds them open so the building can breathe all normal condition the way they want it to. And then when we cut power to it, then the, the damper will close and it'll start doing its smoke control function. And since we normally want them energized, we're going to use our normally closed circuit there. And at the bottom, I left the, the ratings on there. So that 30 volt DC rating, that's the basically the same rating we're going to use for 24 volts or 27 volts or whatever it is our panel's putting out. But the one that we're more concerned with for smoke dampers is that second rating. That's half an amp at 120 volt AC, like we saw in the last slide. And if you've only got one or two dampers on your circuit, doing it this way is really simple, really quick, and it's going to get the job done and be just fine. But for the rest of the time, we have to use that MR101 and it's going to wire up like this. So what's happening here, we're using the addressable relay on the right-hand side to control what the MR101 relay on the left-hand side is doing. And I'll trace our way through the wiring real quick. So this black leg coming down the middle here that contains our hot neutral and ground, this is, the, uh, this is going to be our power coming from the electricians for the circuit. I'm just using a dummy cord in this example, like I always do. Uh, right here, we just have our neutral coming in because this, this relay requires a neutral wire to operate. And that's all that the neutral wire is doing. And then I broke it up by wire color for the two other functions going on. So first I'll chase the black hot wire all the way through. That comes over and hits the secondary side of the MR101. I have it landing here on the common. And then, like I said before, that the dampers are normally energized and then we take power away from them. And that's whenever they go into their smoke control function. So I have it on the normally closed over here. So it comes in, it hits the common. As long as everything's normal, the power passes right through to the normally closed and out to the damper up the switch leg right here. This other side, this red wire comes over and hits our common two on our addressable relay. And then right here, I hope this doesn't confuse people. It hits the normally open two on the addressable relay to come over here. That way the MR101 stays in its normal state most of the time. And then whenever we activate this relay, it turns on the MR101 switching this contact. And the reason we do this, this MR101 only draws milliamps. It doesn't draw very much on this primary side. And so wiring it this way puts all the load of the, the relay on the addressable relay, of all the load of the MR101, I should say, on the addressable relay. So that that's the only thing this is holding. And then at this junction here, all the load of your damper is on the secondary side of your MR101, which as we talked about is these contacts are 20 times as strong as these contacts. This is how a damper is going to wire up. If you have a, a building that has multiple damper circuits, you're going to have to install something like this multiple times. If you've only got the one damper circuit, then you're only going to have to install this one time. If you're not sure how many dampers are on the circuit, Go ahead and install the MR101 like this. It's it's better to play it safe than sorry. You know, it, it would suck for there to just be a third damper on the circuit and it fry that relay and then we have problems and we have to come back out and end up doing this anyways when it's going to be a lot easier to just put it in this way to begin with. And it doesn't cost that much more on our end, especially since us having to go back out and fix it would be a warranty call. So that'll end up costing us way more to go and fix an issue when we could have just put it in this way to begin with. Uh, so the, the small price of the relay during the construction is a lot cheaper than the warranty call later. This was a pretty quick one. I think this is about it. If y'all have any questions, we've got plenty of time to answer them. And uh, I'll go ahead and open up to y'all. I do got a question. All right, what's up? All right, now you were saying that going back to the relays, as far as using, just say like if you had one or two, Okay. Uh, just using the relay by itself, do the voltage drop or the run of the wire, does that take away from it? Are you talking about from the, the rating? Right. No, so we're going to uh, we're going to treat that rating like we have the full 120 volts, no matter how far the, the circuit goes or anything like that. 
Uh, so we're going to go by that half an amp rating on the addressable relay and the 10 amp rating on the MR101. All right, yeah, because just for example, uh, I'm saying if you had a damper on the second floor, but you're getting your power from off of the first floor or wherever you put your relay at, that, that was the question. Will it affect anything? No, that's not. So the further it gets away from any load gets away from the power source, that'll increase resistance on the circuit. Depending on the gauge of wire will depend on how much it increases it. It's going to be a pretty minimal amount. But as resistance goes up in an electrical circuit, the current draw actually goes down. It's a, a relationship that goes back and forth. So as you have less resistance on a circuit, you have more current going through. If you think back to that water hose example we used several months ago and you picture the the three guys with the water hose and you have voltage who's pushing amperage through the hose and then resistance is on the outside and he's got a rope and he's cranking down on the hose the harder he cranks the more resistance there is so the less amperage is able to get through so having that thing further away isn't going to uh isn't going to hurt us at all it might help us stay within spec but typically we just add up how many dampers are on the circuit and make sure we're not exceeding what the relay can handle. Does that help you with that? Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, if y'all got any other questions about dampers, about wiring relays, I think this is going to kind of wrap us up on relays for a while. I think we've hit all the, the big ones and the ones that can get confusing. So if y'all have any other questions, I'll, I'll hang out here. If, uh, if you don't have any more questions, y'all are free to go. This was a short one today. Um, hope y'all are enjoying this wonderful weather.